Millions of Americans care for a loved one struggling with illness, disability, or conditions related to aging. In her latest book, Passages in Caregiving, Turning Chaos into Confidence, best-selling author Gail Sheehy shares her personal account of caring for her husband for 17 years when he was diagnosed with cancer and offers practical guidance for caregivers. We spoke earlier. Gail Sheehy, thank you so much for joining us on the program. You know, Bill Moyer and most of the people, public television viewers, respect that word, said of your new book uh, for, about caregiving that, trust me, there is no better guide to caregiving. That's pretty high praise. Always the book is uh, Passages in Caregiving. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you started on that journey of wanting to write such a definitive book. Well, that came much later. My journey was becoming a caregiver, not being prepared, having no idea, not being trained. Like most family caregivers, there are 50 million of us taking care of adults who used to be independent. And, you know, you're probably entered your second adulthood, mid 40s, 50, and you're really excited about doing new things, finding new passions, simulating old ones. Suddenly you get the call. Mm -hmm. And with, with, for me, it was a call about from my husband's oncologist, I was in a beauty shop getting ready to go to a concert with him, saying, it's not benign. What? The cyst that we took out on Mr. Felker's neck, you know, two years ago, the pathologist recut the old slides. It's cancer. It's cancer. You know, my husband has cancer, and we have to suddenly jump into shock and mobilization, and, you know, our lives change. and. It took months for me to realize that I had a new role too. Now I was something they call a family caregiver. Mm -hmm. And most of us don't even recognize that. It's a professional level role and it can go on for years, as it did in my case, for 17 years off and on. Tell us a bit about your husband. He was a special person too, so yes, that he required, he had, a, he had a community of people that were. Well, we had unique. a circle of care, which I mm -hmm. say is essential. Nobody can do the caregiving role alone. It's impossible, you'll burn out. His colleagues actually circled around, secretly looked at universities and colleges where he might get back into action again to give him a purpose after the, the first uh, operation and treatment. And they found Berkeley was interested. And so Clay, Clay Felker, who had a reputation as being a um, magazine genius, um, came out to Berkeley. Founded we changed our lives. He founded New York Magazine. Mm -hmm. um, this was on the second diagnosis of cancer. And the doctor said, do something wonderful the two of you together that you wouldn't have done but without this crisis. I'm not even going to treat you. So we worked on that. We worked on it for a year and tore up our lives in publishing in New York and moved out here to the Bay Area to Berkeley. Clay began, you know, putting on his lens and professor's clothes every morning and driving over to the J School and giving a new um, generation of journalists the, the excitement about magazines and making magazines with them. It was marvelous. It, it, we had a six-year reprieve. Um, and I think that doing something risky and exciting and dramatic with your life is a, is a, can be a wonderful antidote to illness. But then came the tougher times. Well, that was six years. Then he had a, a, a recurrence. Uh, that was, you know, nine years after the first cancer. Uh, and that was a rough one to, uh, to deal with because, but by then we were far enough around the labyrinth of caregiving, which is my metaphor for walking the labyrinth, the circles of caregiving, that we knew how to deal with it better. And we knew not to take the first diagnosis. And the, we had a doctor who was very um, dictatorial and said, no, you have to have surgery and they'll probably have to remove the voice box because it, even if it isn't involved with the cancer. Well, my husband without a voice, impossible. So we went, found friends who recommended us to another doctor and found another a whole different treatment that, that saved his voice. How do you get the will, the power? the permission to take over your own life or the life of the person who you care about. Well, that's the, the really the essence of the book is it has to be a collaboration between the patient, the caregiver, and the physician, the social worker, the nurse, the other people who are on the team. Uh, and when you respect yourself as being, uh, you know, really the person who pulls it all together, then you can communicate that to the health professionals and they will respect you and work with you. If they won't, you have to move on. Is there a new recognition of 
the contribution that caregivers make, not just to their families, but to our to whole society. society. Yeah. Well, you know, we are the <laughs> we are what keeps the the broken healthcare system together. You know, we the whole in between stage when people can't be cured in a in a acute care hospital anymore, but they aren't ready for hospice, which requires that you be ready to die within six months. That in between stage can last for years, and the patient is released from the hospital or or aftercare home to somebody who isn't trained and who probably needs to continue working to support him or herself for the future. Uh, there's just beginnings of community care and the best community care is the whole idea of the, the village movement which is really taking hold here in the San Francisco area I'm so happy to say the San Francisco village uh, is a way of people coming together in kind of the commune spirit of the 60s and helping each other to live gracefully and productively in their own homes and apartments till the end of their lives by sharing uh, services that they get at a discount it could be a computer tutor or somebody volunteers to walk the dog or water the plants if you're in the hospital uh, but also to share cultural political social life together and really be a community are you uh, encouraged by the new health care legislation that have passed the Congress that there will be more help for those who are keeping many people out of hospitals and out of care institutions by being a, a caregivers? Anything in it for them? There is a tiny thing that's going to take five, six years to vest, um, but there is, for the first time, government long-term care insurance that employers can offer to their employees for a small amount each month, just like Social Security, and then when it's vested after five years, you can take advantage of it at any time that you need home care. And you can get $75 a day to pay a family member or somebody to help you. But that isn't going to actually happen until five or six years because there's a vesting period. But that's a beginning. So in the meantime, you offer in your book many strategies for getting along. For getting, for calling your area agency on aging to find out what the community's uh, resources are. They're in the book. The telephone numbers are in the book. Uh, t looking into an elder care manager who can help you to assemble people that you need and, and walk you through all the crazy rules and regulations so you know how to get your loved one on Medicaid or how to take advantage of Medicare waiver programs that might give people to you to help. Um, it's strategies for taking care of somebody with Alzheimer's, for dealing with the unloved one. You know, everybody isn't just buddy-buddy with their parents. And especially how to have the meeting with your brothers and sisters before the crisis to talk about what each of you could contribute to keep mom and dad at home as long as they can. Well, we've only talked a few minutes about a book that's worth a million bucks for somebody who's had to walk the path you're talking about. Uh, because there are websites in there, there are telephone numbers there and there are are things. Local to, and national resources and right, hotlines. Right, so yeah. Gail Sheehy, Passages in Caregiving, we thank you so much. Thanks, Belva. Mm -hmm.